privilege to be honored uh, for the work that I have the privilege to do. Uh, but it's especially great honor to be honored by people who I respect and admire so much, and that's all of you. And I had the great pleasure of working with Kappa uh, throughout my time in the council, but also previously as a member of the State Assembly in, in crafting important society-changing policy. And I want to just build on some of Richard's comments a little bit and remind all of you how important your work is. Uh, because in alcohol policy in particular, um, this is an area where good policy has changed society, has changed the way people think, uh, and changed the way people interact. And often it's the other way around. You know, the people lead and then the government follows. In this case, policymaking has really changed the way people perceive alcohol abuse. I'm old enough to remember, and a lot of young people in this room, but I see a few people who might also remember, when alcohol abuse was a punchline, it was a comedy riff that people would do on late night talk show. Dean Martin and people like Foster Brooks and stuff, and it was a, it was, hilarious and funny thing to talk about drunk driving or things like this. And you and your predecessors in this movement changed that completely. No one would think about joking about things like that now because they know the deadly consequences of alcohol abuse. And so this has been one of the examples that I use of how you know drafting good policy can really change the world, it can change the way people think. And that's because of all of you, so thank you for that. But how many of you were in City Hall to fight against the late night bar bill? If you could just raise your hand if you showed up at City Hall or <laughs> thank you. And can you take this firsthand the flip side of this, which is that sometimes policy gets influenced and shaped by money and business interests. And this was one of the worst examples that I remember of that. When you had an organization that was formed by, you know, bar interests to come in here and to say, well, if Los Angeles is gonna be a world-class city, we need to do this. We need to do like Paris, these other cities that allow you to drink until 4 a.m. Or, or, or later. And think of the economic development potential that this is gonna create. Think of the revenues that are gonna come into the city. Think of the jobs that will be created. What utter rubbish, <coughs> complete nonsense. Um, first of all, it's clearly not true because we know that alcohol abuse costs far more than it could ever contribute in terms of increased revenues to these bars and to our government. So it's not even true, but it was especially appalling in this context. I'm used to <coughs> groups with money coming in and trying to push us around. I'm used to that, it happens every day city council and Sacramento and everywhere else. But in this area in particular, when we know that alcohol abuse is a social justice issue as well, when we've seen for generations big international companies shoving cigarettes and alcohol and drugs down the throats of the communities that are most impacted by these things, by advertising directed towards people of color and to poor people so that they will be consumers of these goods, over consumers of these goods, so that these companies make these <coughs> massive amounts of money and the communities that are impacted by that are left with the consequences. And so it was especially appalling to see these folks come in here and talk about that. So. Again, just to build on, on Richard's uh, opening statement, let me just tell you that no matter how much money a group has when they come in to a place like City Hall or into our state capitol, the one thing that will always, excuse the pun, trump that, I, I hate to use that phrase, <laughs> that the one thing that will always defeat that is the power of people organizing. And so please, we defeated this bill. It will be back, I suspect. It's come back like a vampire again and again, no matter how many times we put the stake in its heart, it comes back. This bill and other bills like it 
will continue to come back. It really is up to all of you, more than it is to people in government. It's up to all of you to make sure that we don't allow money to have a priority over saving lives. And that's up to you. And for that, I thank you for your work. I thank you very much for this honor. It means a great deal to me. Let's keep up the fight together.